Hey, it's AJ Lester here from UnleashAwesome.com. So today what I want to do is share a little tip with you that'll help you to hopefully avoid a common mistake that people often make when they find themselves in contentious situations or there's some sort of conflict that comes up and they want to resolve it. And this is actually an area that I spend quite a lot of time in working with people and helping them with communication techniques and processes and whatnot that will actually help to resolve conflicts and contentious situations and arrive at a solution. So I see this mistake quite a lot and I want to share this little tip to help you avoid it. And so the tip is that whenever you have any kind of contentious situation or conflict or something that you want to resolve, do not try to resolve it in any sort of text form, email, text, messenger or anything like that. The only way to resolve conflicts or contentious situations or anything is by verbal discussion, maybe over the phone or even better, usually face to face. But one way or the other, you need to be talking in person with the other person and not trying to discuss it by text. And this is something that I kind of discovered the hard way many years ago in my own life. And you know, I made a lot of mistakes with trying to email people when I had issues and that kind of thing. And it never worked out. And eventually I realized when you do try to discuss things and, and hopefully resolve things by text, it often just actually makes things worse and everything can actually spiral out of control. So the issue doesn't get resolved and the emotions and all the contention in that can actually escalate as well. And so once I realized this, I kind of made a personal resolution to never do it by text ever again. Uh, and of course, along the way, I've made a few of my own mistakes by falling into the trap of doing that. And every single time I've done it, it has actually never worked out. And I remind myself, that's why you never talk about things by text and you're better off doing it verbally instead. So I've seen plenty of examples in my own life. And then when I started working with people, I saw lots of examples where things had gone off the rails in their relationships with other people, whoever that might be, because they might've had issues and then they tried to discuss them and resolve them by text. And they were trying to get their point of view across and it just ex escalated into an argument and there wasn't actually a resolution. So this is something that you might have seen as well, because a lot of people that I talk with have run into the same issue and you know, I see it all over the place. And I'm struggling to find any examples where somebody said, you know what, I had this really contentious issue. There was a lot of emotion and anger and resentment or whatever. And then we had this chat by email and we solved the whole thing. It pretty much doesn't happen. And the reason for that, in my view, is that text is a good tool for communication only in certain situations. So if you have some straightforward information to exchange or you want to give somebody an update or you want to organize some logistics or something that is emotion free, then text can be a really way, great way to, to get that information across. It can also work fairly well if you're actually doing something that has emotional content that's on the positive side of the spectrum. So, you know, if you want to talk about something exciting or whatever, then text can work OK with that. It's not generally as good as talking, you know, verbally on the phone or face to face or whatever, because that's where the emotion can really come across in a genuine way. But it's still OK and it generally doesn't cause problems. But the problems come in anytime there's any kind of negative or painful emotion around the content being discussed. That's where text just does not work. Uh, and it can actually lead, as I said, to the emotions escalating so that people you know, feel more and more intense, painful emotions of whatever kind they might be. And it can also lead to the actual issue itself becoming worse and certainly not getting resolved. So what I suggest is anytime there's painful emotions, you get straight off the text communication. And sometimes you can encounter these issues by text where you're going back and forth by email or messenger or whatever it is, and things are fine. But then you hit an issue and then you might find yourself starting to discuss it. And then you realize, ah, there's negative emotion or painful emotion coming up for me. Or maybe you recognize from what the other person is saying that there's painful emotion coming up for them. As soon as you recognize that's the case, resolve to take it immediately offline and say, look, I don't think this is working to talk about it in text form. How about we catch up or how about I give you a call and we can discuss it properly then. And, you know, there's, of course, never any guarantees that you're going to resolve it if that's all you do. But you'll have a much, much better chance of resolving the issue without it escalating if you do actually talk to the person 
because when you talk by text, it's not a very good way of communicating emotion. It has a very low bandwidth. And by that, what I mean is you really can't convey a lot of information compared to the amount of time that you spend putting in putting the words on, you know, into the on the page or into the, the uh, device or whatever it might be. So you can spend a long time trying to type something up and you still won't actually convey anything like the amount of information that you can convey if you actually just talk on the phone for a couple of minutes. And of course, at the same time, the words themselves, as you would know, are only a tiny proportion of any communication and a lot more of the communication is your voice tone, body language and things like that. So the words alone are very poor at you know communicating, especially when there's emotion there. So if you're talking on the phone, then you obviously get the voice tone and you can actually communicate a lot more information back and forth. And it happens in real time as well. So you can actually check that the other person's understanding. You can make sure you're understanding them. You can ask questions, go back and forth and clarify in a way that it would just take forever to do if you're just texting back and forth. Um, and then of course, if you're talking in real life in person, then you do have the facial expressions, the body language and all that kind of thing that makes the communication even more effective. So you have a maximum bandwidth and that allows you to use other tools for communicating and resolving issues more effectively than you ever could by text. So I think though, that the reason people often gravitate towards text well, there's a couple of reasons. One that really sticks out is that it's just becoming more and more of a common way for people to communicate in general. And I know certainly younger people, that's almost the only way they communicate. The thought of picking up the phone like we used to when we had the landline in the kitchen back in the day and calling somebody because that's all, all we could do. The thought of doing that is, is like really weird to a lot of young people. So all they do is communicate by text. And that means if contentious issues come up, that's just the default way that they communicate and they don't necessarily think of doing it another way. So that can happen for young people, but it can also happen for people of any age if that is the way that you're used to communicating now. So that's one way, reason that I think people gravitate towards text, even in contentious situations. But I think another one is because if the situation is contentious and there's conflict and painful emotions, it's often a lot more comfortable to just sit behind the computer and type up an email or type up a message on your phone. And if you don't have to actually talk to the person or be face to face with the person, it can be a lot less confronting. And that might actually be the case. You can just type it up in the comfort of your own home and send it off. And you don't have all that awkwardness or the, the confrontation feeling. But at the same time, you miss out on all of the other things that can actually make the communication and the resolution more successful as well. So this is one of those situations where getting outside your comfort zone and actually talking in person with another person is actually going to be something that will yield a much better result. And by leaning towards comfort, you're actually compromising the outcome that you would have got otherwise. So those are only a couple of reasons why I think people might lean towards text. And of course, another one is, as I said, maybe you're just already texting back and forth. And before you realize it, you end up just getting sucked into arguing or discussing something by text that just came out of nowhere because you were just already in the momentum of, of communicating by text. But like I said, if that happens, it's best to cut it off, take it offline and discuss it there. Now, uh, another situation that I know or another reason why people might want to put things into text form uh, deliberately is because if it's a situation with any kind of legal implications, then you might think, well, I'm not going to call this person because when things are verbal, it's not in writing and there's no record of what was said and that kind of thing. And if we need a record for legal purposes, then that's why we're going to email back and forth or whatever. And I can see on one hand that that makes perfectly good sense. Uh, but what I suggest instead is if it is something where you think there could be legal ramifications, I suggest that you call the person to begin with and actually just establish a channel of communication where you can talk things through, understand each other, clarify things and kind of move towards a solution with the you know bandwidth that you've got available, which makes it much more effective. And then once you have actually you know ended that communication by phone or in person or whatever, you can then always follow up and send that person an email and say, hey, just following up on our conversation that we literally just had, uh, these are all the points that I've noted from the, the conversation that we discussed. Uh, and I just wanted to send them through to make sure that our understanding, is, our understanding is the same. 
And if there is something that I've put in these notes that is incorrect or, or I haven't understood properly, please let me know and we can, we can update it so we, we're both on the same page. And if you do that, obviously then you do have an email record. And of course, if you email the person and they say, yeah, it's all good, well, they've basically confirmed all the things that you've said verbally in writing. So you do have a legal record now. And of course, if there is any misunderstanding, which can happen, and if it's clear in writing, then they might see, oh, he thought this or she thought that, uh, and it's actually a different way, they can clarify by text. But usually by that point, probably a lot of the emotion will have been taken out of it because you had a really good chat and you've actually been able to preserve the relationship and resolve the issue as well or move towards a resolution. And so it won't be so contentious when you're actually just following up by email. But of course, if things go off track again, you know what to do, take it offline. So like I said, I've had a lot of experiences over the years where I saw this coming and I decided to take it offline and discuss things in person and it worked really well. And I've had a few times where I slipped up and got sucked into discussing things by text and it never worked out well. And in fact, there's a situation I can remember once where uh, when I moved out of my old place, I started renting it out to a tenant and one of the tenants, you know, at some point, there were quite a few issues and there were all kinds of things. And by the time they left, things were really contentious. And I was usually working through a property manager and for legal reasons, because things actually did get uh, pretty hectic, she recommended that you know I send an email to her, she would pass on the key details to the tenant and then the tenant would pass details back to her. And there was a bit of a Chinese whispers effect uh, and she wanted to be involved because then there was a clear record of everything that was said. And of course, all the communication was by email for that reason. Uh, and in the end, it just wasn't working and things were just getting really out of hand. And I just said to her, look, can I just call the guy? I think if we just have a chat, it'll work out really well. And I mean, things have been going back and forth for probably a couple of months. And she said, well, I don't recommend it because then I'm not in the loop and then there's no record of anything. And I said, I think it's just going to work out better anyway. We had probably a 45 minute chat and, you know, we were almost hating each other and we'd never met. Uh, because we'd just been communicating via the property manager and emails and all this stuff had got out of hand and by the time we finished the conversation I won't say that we were friends but we were actually you know communicating really clearly and the guy said man I wish we'd had this chat a couple of months ago before all the sleepless nights and all the stress and all the hassles of things going back and forth and I felt much the same way because the tension and the stress of trying to deal with this situation just kept on lingering there and we didn't get it resolved and it went on and on and on one chat we came to an agreement we were both happy to to meet each other in the middle and come to the party because the chat had actually established that oh there's a real human being on the other end here this guy is a pretty decent guy i'm a decent guy we should be able to get together and sort something out that's what we did and it was resolved in no time and so it made me realize if we would just done that from the beginning it would have been so much better and that's what the guy said and it was just another reminder to not go down the text path when there's contentious issues. So as I always do in these videos, I know I've kind of belabored the point from many different angles, but I really just wanted to emphasize that it's such an important thing. And I really want you to take this home with you and to keep an eye out for any of those contentious situations and avoid getting sucked into the trap. Uh, and if that happens, then you know what to do. You can always get yourself back out of it. And at any time, even if you're halfway through a massive argument by email, at any time you can say, look, this isn't working. How about we have a proper chat? And I'm sure you'll have a lot more success from there. So yeah, keep it in mind. It's a really great resolution to have just as an ongoing thing throughout your life. Um, I hope it's useful for you. As always, I'd love to hear what you think. Have you ever had success discussing any contentious issue by text? Prove me wrong. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, but I'd also love to hear about other situations where you've applied this and it's, it's worked as well. So any comments at all, any feedback, just drop it below. Uh, obviously, it's cool if you subscribe to this channel. Uh, and either way, come back again tomorrow and I'll have uh, hopefully some more tips on communication and, and uh, interactions and things like that. Because it's an area that I like a lot. So stick around and I'll see you then. Ciao for now.